Welcome back. I would like to talk about performance recovery within the context of adaptive or uh, neuroadaptive control. Um, I showed you these two references before. One of them is called any command governor architecture for transient response shaping. Basically, when I cover um, when I covered the scalar adaptive control case, the material that I used, they were that material was from this paper. And in this video, I will extend this to the higher order case. Um, if you go ahead and read this paper, you will see that I will I will cover uh, performance recovery slightly different than how I covered this paper about 10 years ago. So uh, basically, this is for you to better understand the power of that method. method. And if you're interested, a sister approach to this method is published in this um, paper, Direct Uncertain Uncertainty Minimization Framework, that also deals with performance recovery without modifying the reference model. And I will talk about um, uh, whether it is important to modify the reference model or not later in this video. All right, so um, I would like to consider uh, adaptive control to establish the structure of the performance recovery signal V. Everybody likes block diagram, so let's look at the block diagram from previous lectures. So I am focusing on this system here, x that equals to ax plus b delta. a and b are known. Delta is the unknown control effectiveness matrix, and W0 is a parameterized or structured uncertainty. Um, in this video, when we develop the structure for the performance recovery term, I will use the basically this structured uncertainty case with the understanding you can use the same structure for V for neuroadaptive control as well with leakage modification or projection operator. So the structure of V will remain the same. All right, so um, to recover the performance against, uh, you know, uh, transient, uh, per per transient performance, when we learn, right, you cannot learn instantaneously um, how you are going to cancel the uncertainty. It takes some time. And, or if you are using a leakage term, right, here, minus sigma w hat, sorry for my bad writing, minus sigma w hat, this is the leakage term, then uh, performance uh, may not be as desired. And we designed this performance recovery signal V to improve the overall closed loop system performance. And that's the purpose of this video. So V at this signal, you write, you have your nominal control for this system. You have your adaptive control system that comes from this block using the state of the system and the command, here is the state. So we are adding this new player to the actual control signal that we are going to send to the system as well as to the reference model. This is what I meant by we modify the reference model for good that you are going to understand um, later in this video. All right, so if you use, um, if you want to use after you watch this, this video, you are going to get the structure for V. If you would like to use for neuroadaptive control, then basically use neural networks here, which will impact the structure of theta that I am going to show in the next slide. Just use this weight update with projection operator, or as I mentioned, you can add sigma, um, uh, leakage modification to for the neuroadaptive control case. So there is no loss of generality. So let me go ahead and start covering the structured uncertainty case. All right. So um, this is the basically I injected all these three signals to the system U N U A and the performance recovery signal. I am doing the one of the biggest trick in controls, adding zero. Right. This is zero. This is zero. Now I am taking the first BUN, putting it here, which if you remember, right, UN is basically, if you rewrite this portion of the dynamics, you are going to get this. And in the former videos, we called this as the AR matrix and this is the BR matrix that you see on the ideal reference model, in this case, modified reference model, since we use BV term. 
Now, since we are dealing with performance re recovery, we are also doing the same treatment, adding zero for the BV term. I am putting the first BV term here and I am going to put the second BUN term and the second BV term inside these brackets. Um, this term is appearing like this, since you already have lambda here, we needed lambda inverse. Likewise, the second BV term appearing here with lambda inverse, since you have lambda here. And so I, I, you can rewrite this as this, this as this. So um, since in these three signals, you have some unknown parameters, right, this, this and that, and known parameters here. Uh, I would like to group them into this form, W transpose multiplied by theta. Once again, if you are doing for this for neuroadaptive control case, this will be composed of radial, radial basis function neural networks. And of course, you are going to have an epsilon approximation error. But so proof, uh, uh, basically, again, um, you can apply this to neuroadaptive control with mild modifications. So, all right, after you do this, basically, we represent, after we group terms like this, we represent the system like this, ARX plus uh, BRC and BV, plus this uncertain term grouping every uncertainty coming from the system and the basis function that uh, the signals that you know. And I am designing my adaptive control signal like this. So close up system becomes or X dot dynamics becomes like this. Basically, UA is this. Once you subtract them to each other, you can write it with W tilde notion. You can always stop the video, take the screenshot and understand and leave a comment if you have any problem in understanding uh, these steps. These are standard steps. I try to provide more detail for everyone. For some of you, it may be boring. For some of you, it may be, you know, important if you are seeing a special adaptive control structures for the first time. So I cover in every detail. Um, and basically, since V multiplies B and this total uncertainty or uh, uncertainty estimation error multiplies B, in the next line, I have this ideal reference behavior and I am putting in brackets this V and this... Um, adaptation error. So the purpose of the um, performance recovery signal V is to suppress the adaptation error, right? So if somehow I come up with an intelligence structure for V that get rid of suppressed the effect, then the remaining system will behave as the ideal system, which is perfect because this is the ideal reference model and this captures the ideal closed-loop system performance that you would like to achieve in the presence of uncertainties. Now, um, to basically come up with this performance recovery signal, I use the ideal reference model, but I modify it with this BV signal for good that you are going to see. Let's look at these two equations closely. So after the, some mathematical um, steps, right, we arrived this state equation x dot and this modified reference model equation. And I just mentioned that the purpose of V is to suppress the effect of this such that if, we, if V suppresses this and we no longer have this term, so our system will behave like the ideal. But the natural question is how to suppress the signal that we don't know. We don't know W tilde because W tilde is W hat minus W. We don't know W. How we cancel the effect of something that we don't know. Now, next, I will show you some magical steps that I discovered 10 years ago. So, okay, right, let's write error dynamics. Once you write error dynamics, meaning that, you know, E dot, E dot is nothing but x dot minus xr dot. So basically, I am sub, you know, I am basically taking the first line, subtracting from this guy, right? They will cancel each other. These terms will cancel each other, and you end up with this minus this, or a r e and this. So this is the standard error dynamics actually, and the main motivation of adding this signal is that. When I subtract these two each other, I still, I recover the ideal 
basically error dynamics that I covered in the previous videos. Now, let's go one step further. Let's rewrite this equation like this. Why not? I just basically e dot, you know, um, I just grouping the known terms and the unknown terms. Now, let's go one step further. Let's multiply this by B transpose and this side B transpose. Let's multiply left and right by B transpose. Then you obtain this equation. Now here I will I assume that B is a full rank matrix, meaning that B transpose B inverse exists or B transpose B is invertible. Um, you can leave a comment under what conditions this can be invertible. First of all, um, for most of the systems, this is already will be B transpose B all will will be most of the time will be implementable. For cases. If it is not invertible, those cases will correspond to when you have redundant actuators. In this case, you can do, um, basically, you can uh, control some actuators at the same time by using um, control allocation. And basically, what I'm trying to say, one way or another, I can always assume, I can always make this B transpose B invertible. Maybe always is a strong word, most of the time, I would like to say. Um, I didn't see a case personally, but again, um, if B is a matrix, tall matrix like this, I can always make it, I, it is most of, it is almost all the time, B transpose B will be invertible. And if B is a fat matrix like this, I can use control allocation techniques to make it, to make B transpose B invertible. Again, um, if you would like to know more, we can chat, uh, leave a comment, um, I can dive into details, but without loss of much generality, I will assume B transpose B is invertible and going from this step to here, I am multiplying left and right with B tr transpose B term. So basically we have B transpose B inverse B transpose A R E minus E dot equals to this. Wait a second. This means that this the signal that we would like to suppress is unknown but it is actually known because left side mathematically equals the right side so if you select v to be like this then what happens is we have this dynamics a r b r c b this is the v that we just select in here like this and this is the this adaptation error but i just showed you here that this is equal to that so basically this is the same term they cancel each other so we end up having the ideal model so with this selection of this performance recovery signal we achieve the ideal close-up system performance under uncertainties at this point, I think it is clear. Yes, we are modifying the reference model. So reference model is no longer capturing your ideal reference behavior. But do we really care? At the end of the day, reference model is something you implemented virtually. So here, with the expense of modifying reference model to write this, your actual system behaves like this, if you select V like this. So don't care about modifying the reference signal, don't make a big deal about it. It is just something virtual that you implement. But at the end of the day, if you focus on the actual system performance, if you select V like this, they will cancel out with each other, obtaining zero, and you will obtain the perfect behavior. Life cannot be so good, right? Um, so let's think about this structure a little bit more. The problem is that most of the time E dot that we use on this performance recovery signal is not available because you can simply have a measurement noise. Um, there are methods, right? In the literature, there, there are some authors. If you're interested, leave a comment. I can just reply to you. There are authors that uh, successfully recover E dot from no noisy measurements. There are filtering techniques, bunch of techniques. But in general, you know, um, if I have a noisy signal, I don't want to differentiate E dot. So for this reason, practically based on my experience, 
Um, I would like to modify. I don't want to use this, use this in practical systems. I would like to modify e dot. I am going to the Laplace domain with its filtered, based the high pass filter multiplied by e. Right. If you look at here, e dot is nothing but in Laplace domain s multiplied by e. Sorry for this notation. I am going between Laplace domain and time domain. So e dot more proper way is inverse Laplace transformation s multiplied by e should be the representation. But e dot basically equivalent to s e. This is the Laplace domain. This is the time domain. So basically, instead of directly differentiating E, I, I also have this low pass filter. Low pass filter with S becomes the high pass filter. So I use this type of a high pass filter, basically. And I, I, we can conclude that as we increase lambda, we think about if lambda is sufficiently large, this is going to zero. This multiplied by this is equivalent to E dot on the time derivative. So as we increase lambda, we approach the ideal close-up system performance. So that's why I talk here performance recovery, right? Since we cannot select like this in practical systems. And by the way, you don't have to. Um, here, I say as we increase lambda, lambda doesn't need to be like 1,000, 100. Uh, as I mentioned in the scalar case, uh, the maximum lambda that I use for any practical system that I deal with is around uh, 20, 25, 15, 20. So, um, and um, I don't need to select it to be sufficiently large. So this is kind of in the Laplace domain. You can write the exactly the same signal in time domain like this. V equals to B transpose B inverse, B transpose multiplied by G f dot equals to minus lambda f minus e and g equals to lambda f plus a r minus lambda i e so this signal is equivalent to this signal um, if you don't believe me take the laplace form of this you are going to obtain the signal i am not going into detail here it's a simple laplace transformation um and i think i made myself clear right as you increase lambda you expect to recover, recover the performance approach the ideal performance more and more since this signal will approach to its ideal form and um, but in practice you need to implement this this gives you the structure of v and basically insert it this to if you are working on adaptive control insert this to your adaptive control scheme as it is or if you are using neuroadaptive control, insert it to your neuroadaptive control as it is, it will work. It will work, okay? Um, and the proof wise, if you look at here, we have the same error dynamics from the previous videos. So this, taking the time derivative of this energy function, basically this portion's time derivative will give you minus E transpose RE term. Taking the derivative of this function, basically you are going to get minus 2d um, lambda f transpose f plus 2d lambda f transpose e. If you add this term as well, you are going to have minus e transpose re. This will be the v dot, right? v dot will be equal to this. Then you can arrange this, come up with some condition on D, such that your system will be bonded. Then you can apply Barbara's lemma to conclude that error and F goes to zero as T goes to infinity. Meaning that if F goes to zero, right, then error goes to zero, F goes to zero, then G goes to zero, this G goes to zero. So entire signal V as T approaches the infinity will go to zero what will happen is that the v signal goes to zero eventually you not only recover the ideal performance but basically your modified reference system as this goes to zero will approach the ideal reference system as well which is um, good but again focus on the actual performance um, punchline for this what i want you to remember for this video if you implement this along with your nominal control and adaptive control signal, as you increase lambda, 
we will recover the performance. So increase it. Start with lambda equals to 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.51. You will see an improvement in your performance. All right, thanks.